for sticking around. For our next discussion, let's watch this piece from Outside the Lines on how trash talking has evolved from the basketball court to social media. Take a look. There's not too many teams that will honestly admit that they don't like each other. These two teams do not like each other. One thing about trash talk is it just happened. Boom, you say something, boom, it's right there. Chasing that farewell tour, they don't love you like that. You can't get no farewell tour, they don't love you like that. Well, at first, when it happened, I didn't even hear it live. You ain't got that type of love. You thought you was coming? I didn't even see it until maybe after the game or when I got on social media, and then they gave me a chance to, you know, respond. When a shot is taken, you got to be prepared for a shot to be thrown back at you. Peyton and Jordan now taunting each other in midcourt. We're not worried about the Sacramento Queens. Forehead to forehead. Like dribbling, like shooting, trash talking has always been a part of the NBA. But with the explosion of social media, the trash has moved from the court to the World Wide Web. I don't think I'm talking trash this year. Social media changed trash talking a lot of ways. Now you could just press send and all of a sudden disseminate your message to the public. Kevin Durant may not be on the court, but he continues to make news, especially on social media. If we see something in the moment, we can put it on the internet for the world to see. That wasn't the case when Scottie Pippen was stepping over Patrick Ewing after the dunk. We watched it, but we couldn't react to it on the internet. Twitter launched way back in 2006, but it would take time for it to affect the way trash is talked. The Houston Rockets defeat the Dallas Savage when they advance to the second round. The first one that stands out is back in April of 2015 when the Rockets' main verified Twitter account put an emoji of a horse with a gun facing it and said, shh, uh, it'll all be over soon. Houston Rockets social media director fired for his tweet last night. Missed its Little did he know he was kind of setting the tone for what the next five years of discourse on social media would look like. Twitter became this place that you could simply put two emojis up there and the whole world would know your true and honest feelings. In 2017, one incident in particular caught the league's attention. He jabbed at Parsons, and he misses badly out of bounds. You know I love Twitter beef. Um, oh. Trailblazers Twitter account Ooh. made fun of this Chandler Parsons airball Friday night. Chandler then responded, good luck in the lottery That's show nice. this year. <laughs> CJ McCollum fired back at Parsons with, we hit the lottery by not signing you. <laughs> and look, so seeing this go down, the NBA wanted to say, let's get out in front of this before some of our A-list stars start doing the same things and jeopardizing the product. The NBA cracking down on team social media accounts. The league issued a memo, and this was a result of the Chandler... The mid-season memo would prohibit official team accounts from disparaging, mimicking, or criticizing opponents or officials. When I trash talk the player, you know, it was between me and him. So now when you trash talk a player, the fans, they can trash talk you through your social media outlets. They can tell you how they feel about you, and, and it's right there in your pocket. What players are now doing on social media is actually taking their disdain for their current situation and tweeting about it. Eric Bledsoe tweeted to the world that I don't want to be here. It was right in the middle of huge trade discussions involving him. He trash talked to his own team into getting traded to a championship contender. That's one of the most successful trash talking instances in sports history. If you have to think about the trash talkers of this day and age, most of those guys do it through social media. It connects players to players fans to players. It's an open mic session, but everybody has a microphone. Scotty, who's the best trash talker in the league today? Well, I would probably say Westbrook. 
Yeah. I think he uh, displays a lot of trash talking, a lot of antics. I know the league doesn't allow a lot of talking out on the basketball court, but he has a way of getting in the guy's head. And the fact that he's controlling the ball for right. most of the game, uh, he normally wins. The other night we heard him tell uh, Damian Lillard a foul is a bucket, and <laughs> Damian Lillard responded on Twitter later, LOL, because, of course, Blazers won the game. Who's your pick, Nick? It's got to be Draymond. Yeah. <laughs> there is he, nothing funnier he, to yeah. me, guys. Draymond is not talking too much trash. Not this year. Not yeah. this year. He's on hiatus for, okay. for, for the moment. But there is nothing funnier to me than when an opposing bench is daring Draymond to shoot a three from somewhere. Draymond hits it and instantly he turns around, around and starts firing away at the other guys. So I've seen that lots. He doesn't do it as much right now, but he'll be back when it matters most. And most importantly, he can get in the guys' heads and he Absolutely. can check them out from playing at their best. I thought Q and, and D. Miles had a good suggestion with Joel Embiid because he does it on both the internet and also in person, as does Jimmy Butler. But I'm going to give you guys someone to keep an eye on for the next few years. John ja Morant talks a lot of trash. I, and it's <laughs> funny because uh, obviously it's nice because he backs it up. Yeah. But it's funny because I saw his first game down in Miami, the season opener. And I'm watching, I'm like, is he, is he talking? And I thought at first he was talking like, come on guys, let's go. And I'm like, no, he's talking. He's talking to people. And so that's been a funny thing. But we see Jimmy Butler the other day with uh, <laughs> TJ Warren blowing kisses. I, I, this is uh, Luka Doncic is another one. I seen Luka Doncic talk trash to his own bench. He slapped he slapped <laughs> assistant coach uh, Jamal Mosley. So <laughs> when you're that good, you can do it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Scotty, speaking of trash talking, you you weren't much of a talker, but there were a couple of instances in your career that are really memorable. Ooh. There was I this had one. Moments where I was I was able to stand on a few people's head, step over, <laughs> them, whatever you. But want then to call you it. talked to Spike Lee afterward. What were y'all talking about? It was kind of that little moment where Spike kind of like. He wasn't my hero then, you know. He was my hero for a long time watching about them Nick sidelines and things. But when he came into my house and was talking trash, I just told what? him, take a seat. Take a seat? Take <laughs> or a seat. What about in 1997? This is the, to me, this is one of the most famous ones of all time. In the finals, Carl Malone's at the free throw line. It was a Sunday. What did you say? Well, this is an easy one. I had my brother in town. My brother was a postman. Uh -huh. So Carl Malone is at the line game is on the line and I I was pretty good friends with Carl actually so I just walked by him and said the mailman don't deliver on Sunday <laughs> <laughs> and to this day I think that's the greatest line in basketball it's what I, hey, and man. there would never be another mailman <laughs> absolutely I'm not gonna argue I just want to know was that a you know like my, my, my cousins are in the music industry, and so there's some things that come off the top of the head, and then there's some things that are pre-written. Was that no, a pre-written no, rhyme? off the top of my head. Off the top of my head. You went freestyle right freestyle. there. Freestyle. Bro, you... that was a big game. We yeah, it was the finals. That, that game. <laughs> when you said it, did you know you had gotten to him right away? Not till after he bricked them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up. Who's more likely to make the All-Star game, Ben Simmons or Zach Levine? But first, time for our second distant replay of the day. This one is from this date on 2009. Just Gerald so. Wallace, the greatest Hornet ever Bell or Bobcat ever? To Wallace. He one -hands it oh, down wow. With Who threw Odin that lob? And that's the fifth foul on Odin. And Gerald Wallace. I can't even see. Who threw, is that Ray Thumpton that threw the lob? Two wow. A we need a big one. Wallace in the house. He is the Charlotte team. I'm playing at this level, the depth, they've answered them all in the first half, but shout out quickly to Dwight. Yeah. I did not think Dwight could play at the level he's been playing. Dwight is playing at that level. There's no reason to rush AD back at all with him playing like that. How do you feel the same way? They should win, but that makes LeBron that much more tougher when AD doesn't play because now he gets everybody in involved and but Houston should win the game, but it should be a very good game. All right. With a couple of games on our ESPN slate tonight, it's time for another edition of Jump Ball. Yeah, we like basketball puns. All right, first of all, Ben Simmons or Zach Levine? Both players are having strong seasons and making a push for the All-Star team. Currently, Levine is sixth in fan voting for guards and Simmons is eighth. Scotty, who's the more likely All-Star, Simmons or Levine? 
I'm going to probably go with Levine. Really? Uh, All-star game being in Chicago. He's, he's having a great season. I um, think he's been averaging about 30 points the last month. So he's probably going to get the nod. Uh, ben still has to add a few more pieces to this game for All-star. Now, Nick, remember, this is the coaches are going to be picking the reserves. Do you have Levine or do you have Simmons? Simmons. And here's why. Historically, guys, when you have a bunch of players who are about equal stats-wise, the benefit of the doubt always goes to the player who's on a winning team. And Zach has put up some nice numbers, but you put Ben Simmons on the Bulls, he'd rack up a triple-double damn near every night. There's just not a lot of talent on the Bulls. So if it's me, I think Simmons gets the nod because the Sixers have had a lot more success this year. All right. Next up, who's harder to guard, Damian Lillard or Luka Doncic? Lillard is currently seventh in the league in scoring at 26.8 points per game. Lucas fourth with 28.8 points per game. All right, these two are going to face off tonight, obviously, on ESPN. Nick, who's guarded harder to guard, Dame or Luca? It's Dame. Maybe over time it's Luca, and with the plays he's been making recently, he's going to get all the praise uh, for the rest of his career. Damian Lillard has hit bigger shots in bigger moments, and he's the guy I'm trusting right now. Who you got, Scotty? I'm going to go against him. I'm going to say Luka. Oh, wow. I think Luka beats you in so many ways. Dame can beat you with his scoring, but I think Luka beats you in a lot of different ways. Getting into your paint, being able to create, being able to make plays for other people. He's a big guy, so double-teaming him yeah. yep. doesn't help you. And, and I, I see going down stretch of the games, he's a guy that you can't afford to double-team. This is what I like about this question. There is no right answer. Just watch the game and we're going to have fun. All right, our league pass game of the night is Heat versus Thunder, 8 p.m. Eastern. These are two teams that were rumored to be trade partners before the season started. However, the Thunder surprised many people with a strong season, even though they've dropped two of their last three. Nick, take a look at the Heat's notable trade assets. Do you think they should be aggressive at the trade deadline or keep their flexibility moving forward? Remember, they want to be in the Giannis sweepstakes in 2021. If you can get Bradley Beal, go for it, make something happen. But, Scotty, you and I have had this debate for years. Can Jimmy Butler be the number one guy on a title contender moving forward? I think that he can. And I think this Miami T Heat team is set up very well for Jimmy Butler to have success. Uh, his leadership is already being displayed at a very high level. So I believe that he can. He was right all along, Nick. See, you were doubting him when you covered him in Chicago and Minnesota. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We're, we're halfway through the first hey, season. Jim Talk to me in about four or five months. <laughs> Keep winning, Jim. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Scotty. Thanks to the knucklehead. D-Miles and Clay Richardson for joining me today. Rachel's in Houston for the jump court side tomorrow at Lakers Rockets.